It's TK Friday, and today I'll be doing another full edit using the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. I'm entitling this one Duet in Flight, the Hummingbird Ballet. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. It's TK Friday, my favorite day of the week, and I hope it is yours, too. Today, I'm doing an image of two hummingbirds. This image comes to us from Arnold Berger, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, Arnold. If not, please forgive me. I'm a big fan of hummingbirds, so it's a real pleasure to edit this image today of these really two cool hummingbirds. Now, as always, I start out here in Lightroom, and this is what the image looks like right out of the camera. And this is what it looks like after some minor processing in Lightroom. Now, I did use a linear profile. I always like to start out with a linear profile. And I uh, clicked on Auto. There was some clipping in the highlights and shadows, meaning you lose detail when you have clipping in highlights and shadows, and I don't want that. So I had to adjust the white and black sliders here to keep that from clipping. And then I always just uh, do a little bit of sharpening here. No noise reduction. And also, I always like to do lens corrections, remove chromatic aberrations. I have that checked on as well as enable profile corrections. And that is basically it. However, I did do a crop. I'll show you what it looks like. This is the crop that I've made on this image. I felt it needed a crop. And now it looks like this. And now we'll be sending that into Photoshop. Now at this point, I would right click on the image and go to edit in and edit in Photoshop 2024. I'm already over there. And here we are in Photoshop ready to begin. Now, as on every TK Friday, I'm providing the image for you as well as the PDF notes so you could try this edit out for yourself. I'll be removing some objects from this image using a uh, delete and fill. I'll be using this button right here as well as some TK Gen fill. I just want to show you how that works. I'm not going to do the full removal here, but then I'm also going to give you this image here after I remove things. So you can download both images. You can try the delete and fill as well as the TK Gen fill panel. And this TK Gen fill panel is absolutely free. Don't forget to get that. You know, there'll be links for that in the description below this video. Hey, and if you have an image you'd like me to edit on a TK Friday, scroll down to the bottom of the description and you'll find a contact me. Contact me and we could talk about editing one of your images on a TK Friday. And by the way, if you don't yet own the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, you can save 15% off the TK9 plugin for Photoshop along with training videos. Use my promo code DK15. That gets you 15% off of everything. Not only are you saving money, but you're supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly when you use that promo code DK15. So thank you all for using my promo code. I really appreciate it. This is what the image looks like right out of Lightroom. Now there's some distractions in this image like these flowers over here on the right hand side, this flower right here and this flower here. So I removed this flower, this flower, and these flowers over in here, and I think this pink flower down here. Now, as I said earlier, I'm providing this image with the flowers removed that I just talked about, as well as this image. This image you can use to practice working with this delete and fill button, as well as the TK Gen fill panel, which I highly recommend that you get. And it is absolutely free. There'll be links in the description below this video. I'm not going to spend too much time here, but I'll show you a couple things that I'll remove here and then you practice on your own, okay? And then we'll get right to this image and do our edit. So let's start out here first. First thing I want you to do is grab a lasso tool. Type L to get your lasso tool. I think what I'll do first is just lasso around these flowers, like right here. I could have got that one too, believe me, it would have came out too, but I'll use a different selection tool for this. Now this delete and fill button, all you have to do is give this a click and you'll notice what it does is it'll make a new layer and it deletes that and does a great job, right? Now this delete and fill works with any of your selection tools. So let's grab an object selection tool this time. So I'm gonna click on the object selection tool and I'm in uh, rectangle mode. And what I'll do is just select this flower right here and click the DNF button and like magic, it is gone. Now, let me try to get rid of this flower right here. And I think the best way to get rid of this is with the TK Gen Fill panel or Generative Fill in Photoshop. And so what we're going to do is click on this button right here, which is a brush tool. And this is really nice with the TK Gen Fill panel. You can brush on your selections. Now, it defaults at 100%. 
It has other percentages here for like if you're going to blend like an element into the image, like if you want to add something to your image. I have videos on my YouTube channel that you could check that out. But with this brush around this size, what I'm going to do is just paint around this flower just like so down into here. Come over here like that. Just paint that right on and click generate and see what kind of a job it does. It'll give us three different versions. All right, there's our first version. I don't like this right here, but that could come out very easily. Let's see, here's our second version. That's pretty nice, and here's our third version. I kind of like the second version, I think. Now, I could click Generate and generate this again, but what I do here, I think, is just get a lasso tool and just come right around here like so and click on the DNF button for delete and fill again, see and fix that right up. Now that's all I'm gonna do for now, but I also use the uh, brush in Gen Fill and painted over this flower and stem and got rid of this. And also this flower down here and this little flower over here. So practice on those. That's all I'm gonna do for now because I gotta get to the edit. Now, once you get everything removed and you're happy, and satisfied with everything, just click your flatten button and you'll just merge those all into just one background layer and then you can start your edit from there. I'm gonna go ahead and close this image and I'm not gonna save it, but practice on that image. Remember you have that as well as this one with everything removed. Now I always like to start out with balance and contrast, so let's click this luminosity button and get a midtones 3 just to protect shadows and highlights from clipping, okay? Because we don't want to lose detail in the brightest highlights or the darkest shadows. And we're going to output that to a color grading tool. And now we can start. And I think I'll start with shadows. I'll click on the shadow button. And all we need to do is take this slider and we're going to move this to the left. Now, nothing happens when you start to slide this until you release the click of your mouse. And what I want to do is take this over to right here at minus 16. Okay, here's the before and here's the after. It just darkens up the shadows a bit. Next, we'll go to midtone. So I'll click on the midtone button and I just want to open up the midtones. So I'm going to drag this to the right and a little bit more. How about right here? 39. I think that's good. That's a plus 39. And I just want to warm it up a little bit. So I'm just going to hover my cursor right about here and give it a click and see what it looks like. Yeah, see, that just gives it a little bit of warmth, and I like that. So here's my overall. Here's my before, and here's my after. And I tried adjusting the highlights, but wasn't really doing much for me, so I left that out. So I'm just doing the shadows and the midtones. But that's the balance and contrast. Again, the before and the after. But already we're off to a good start. This is a happy, fun image to me. After the balance and contrast adjustment, I like to really study the image and see if there's any problems that I could take care of right off the bat. And right down here at the bottom of the image, see this area? It's a little bit too light. I'd like to tone it down a little bit. I can burn this down a little bit right over in here. So to do that, Let's X out of the color grading tool. Nothing changes on my color grading adjustments here. But what I want to do is grab a color mask because we have some color in here, this beige color. I'm going to click right here and click OK and see how well that samples. Yeah, see, it knocks out these flowers there in black, so they're not going to get an adjustment. But let me go ahead and lighten up this adjustment with this brightness slider. And I think somewhere right around here will do the trick. Now, I'm going to burn that. So I'm going to use a burn tool. Now, the burn tool has two sides. It has a 50% gray side and a transparent side. You can use either side you like. I'm going to use the 50% gray side, so I'll click on the left side of the burn tool. Now, you can tell by the selection indicator that I'm painting through a selection, so I have a nice big soft edge brush here. Right now, I'm at 100% opacity. I'm going to type my one key because what I want to do is build this up slowly, so I'm going to start painting. Now, every time you see me paint, I've lifted my brush. Okay, now remember, I'm only using 10%, so it's helping me to finesse this just to get this blended just right, and I'd rather take my time and get it right. So, again, every time you see me paint, I've lifted that brush, and I'm, I'm going to come over in here a little bit, down here, even right here just a couple times, but right like that, and I think I've got it. So let's take a look. Here is the before. I'm just shutting this layer off. Here's the before and here's the after. See how it just tones that down. I think I'll come over here too and give this a little bit of darkening over in this area here too. And I think, think I like that. 
Okay, let's move on. Okay, now I'm studying like some of this greenish yellow area up in here. I'd like to tone this down a little bit, pull the saturation back a little bit, and slightly darken that. So what I'll do is use another color mask. And it's always great to use a color mask when you have a lot of color, so it really isolates that color. So I'm going to click right here and click OK. And let's brighten that up a little bit with this brightness slider. Something like that, I think, should be good. Let's output that to a hue saturation adjustment layer. And let's pull back. I'm just going to work with the master. I'm going to pull this back a little bit to, say, right here, like a minus 15. And then we have a lightness slider. And I just want to slightly darken that to, like, a minus 15. Five. So here's the before and here is the after. So the before and the after. But I just want to contain it up in this area. So I'm going to do something that I don't do too often. And what I'll do is put this in a group. So this button right here is a group button. And the left side will put it in a group with a black mask. The right side will put it in a group with a white mask. I'm going to use the group with a white mask. So I'll click on the right side. And you can see. That hue saturation is in this group. And now I'm going to grab a gradient tool. So I'm going to click right here. Now in the gradient, there's the classic gradient and the new gradient. I use the new gradient. So make sure it just says gradient. And in this drop down here, you're going to find different folders. Open up the basics folder and make sure you click this one black to white. And you'll notice mine is on reverse. So if I click this reverse, you'll see the black go to the left side. So let me click reverse. You see that? I'll click reverse again. But I want the white on the top because that'll let the top get darker and graduate slowly as it goes down. So what I'm going to do is click right up here, right outside of the canvas and start to pull down. Hold my shift key down to constrain that. You see that, how that'll constrain. And I want to drag it down to maybe somewhere right around there. And then we have this diamond here. You can adjust this. You can see it's kind of like a window blind. We can just pull this down. So that way it'll just graduate off. You see that over here in the mask. Now you'll notice this bird has some of that greenish yellow in, and there's a little bit of green and yellow in this bird over here. Not much, but we can fix that. We have this mask right here. Now, right now my mask is selected. So what I can do is grab a black brush by clicking this button right here. Right now I have a white brush. You can tell by the swatch. So I'll click on this black brush and make sure your brush is at 100% opacity. If not, you can type your zero key. And with a nice small brush, what we can do is just paint at 100% over any area on this bird that has that green, just so it will not get the darkening and desaturation effect. And there's a little bit on this bird, maybe up here in his head a little bit here, but right like that. Now take a look. Here is the before and here is the after. Now we can go ahead and close this group by clicking this little triangle right here and that just closes it. The next thing I want to do is pop out some detail on these birds because we really want our eye to go to those because they are the star of this picture. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to stamp all these layers together because I'm going to use the camera raw filter. So click this button, you'll stamp all these layers together. And now I want to turn this into a smart object in case we want to go back and readjust this. So if you click this button right here, we'll turn this layer into a smart object. And now we can click this button to go into the camera raw filter. And here we are. Now inside of here, I want to use effects. And if your effects is not open, just look for effects in this list right here in this develop area. Click effects. You'll open that up and we're going to work with texture, clarity, and dehaze. So first off, we're going to use texture. And what I want to do is drag this slider to the right to build up texture. You see how the texture goes in it? If you go to the left of zero, you'll remove texture. And sometimes that's nice to use, but we're going to increase texture. So we're going to go to the right and I'm going to go over here to 25. And now we're going to go to clarity and give this a little bit of clarity. So we're going to move it to the right and you see the clarity going there. So we're going to go over to like 38. It's not going to look good on the rest of the image, but I'll show you how we take care of that. And now the dehaze. The dehaze will add some contrast and saturation. It's meant for dehazing, but I'm using it here just to add a little bit of contrast and a little bit of saturation. And I think I'll take it right here to 14. 
And while we're still here in the camera raw filter, I can take advantage of the light adjustment. So let's click on light. And what I want to do is open up the highlights. And I'm just looking at the birds, not the rest of the image, by the way. So I'm going to take the highlights and start to drag this to the right. And I'm going to drag it over to like, not much, but like plus 21. And I just want to open up the shadows a little bit. So I'm going to take this over to like 19, plus 19. And now there's one more thing I want to do. We now have a new tool in Color Mixer. So I'll click on Color Mixer. You have a regular mixer where you can adjust your hue, saturation, luminance, or you could do all at once. But what I want to do is go to Point Color. This is new in Lightroom as well as in Camera Raw and the Camera Raw filter. So what I'm going to do is click this eyedropper and we can sample some of the color in here, like maybe right about here. And there's that color. This is a pretty elaborate new tool. I'm just going to work with hue, saturation, and luminance, however. I'm not going to go into the weeds with this new tool today. I'm just going to shift the hue a little bit to the right. And I'm again, I'm just looking at the bird. I just want to have a little bit more of a greenish color in there. And I think I'm going to go to like plus seven. And now I'm going to give it some more saturation. And it's only targeting that tone I picked in that bird wing. Now we'll take the saturation and we'll move it to the right. And I'm going to go to like 27, I believe it is. Yeah, 27. And now I want to lighten that up a little bit. So we're going to move this luminance slider to the right. And I think I'll go over to like plus 21 right there. But again, the rest of the image looks horrible. And I know you said, Dave, you ruined it now. I really didn't. And that's all I'm going to do here. And now all we need to do is click OK. And that sends us back to Photoshop. Now, what can we do with this monstrosity? Well, the first thing we can do is come to our combo or CX panel. Now my CX panel is open for actions, but it'll have these same buttons in a different arrangement. I'm gonna click on this button right here and put a black mask just to hide that monstrosity for now, okay? And now what I wanna do is get an object selection tool. So I'll click on the object selection tool. Now I'm set for the uh, rectangle mode. And what I'm going to do is just kind of get a rectangle around my hummingbird like this and see what it gets selected. See, now it selects all these sharper areas here. And that's good. I don't care about these wings because they're out of focus right here. And I don't want to throw too much detail in there. So what I'll do next is select this other bird. Now, if you hold your shift key down and we select like about that much. And see, that's good. This area of the wing, I really don't want selected because it's out of focus and that area is okay. And now we have both birds selected. Now, here's a tip for you. Now I have these selections, but I want to add these to this mask right here. And I need to use white paint. Right now, you see I have a black swatch on top. Now you could click this button here and flip these swatches around, or you can use your shortcut of D for default, and that'll give you a white swatch on top a black swatch on the bottom. Now here's a really nice tip and write this one down. If you hold your command or control key down and while you're holding down the command or control key, type your delete key and you'll fill that selection with the background color, which is not what I want, but remember that that'll come in handy. But the other thing we can do is hold your option or alt key down and type your delete key. And then you'll fill this mask with this selection in white, which is what we want. So let me go ahead and do that. So I'm on a Mac, I'm holding the option key down, it's Alt on a PC, and now I'm going to type my delete key. And you notice what happened, it filled that mask, right? That's really cool. Now we see the marching ants here, we can click this button on the combo panel, and now we can see we've nicely filled those birds in. Now they have that nice color on the wings, the detail has popped. What I want to do though is blend this area right here, this sharp area into the blur area here. So what I'll do is get a white brush. So I'll click on the white brush and then at about 40% opacity, I'll type my four key. Right now I'm at 100%, I'll type my four key. And what I just want to do is just kind of paint along here just to blend this area in where this wing hits this kind of area that's starting to go out of focus. And that'll bring a little bit of detail right into this area right here. So something like that. And that's really all I want to do. Now let's check it out. Here is the before and here's the after. But see how that really pulls you into the birds. Now remember, this is a smart object. We can double click on camera raw filter and go back and tweak any of those adjustments that we want to at any point in time. And now what I want to do is I want 
to make sure my viewer goes into these birds. Now, I've already added detail to help that out, but now I'm going to do something else. I'm going to grab a lasso tool. I'm going to type L to get my lasso tool. I'm going to use a freehand vignette and a spotlight together. I'll show you what I mean. What I'm going to do is lasso around this area like this, around the birds, okay? And what I want to do is darken everything outside of there. So I can use a freehand vignette to do that. So let's click on freehand vignette. And the Gaussian blur dialog comes up. I accept the radius just the way it is. Click OK. We can see here is the before and here's the after. But see, that's bringing more emphasis to the birds. And this defaults at a 30% opacity in the multiply blend mode. I'm not going to use any blend if or anything on here. I'm just leaving it just the way it is. And I like that. Okay, so now I have a vignette. Now to really sell this, what I'm going to do is add a spotlight. Now if you look over at your actions, you do have a spotlight dimmer. Here's what we're going to do. Command or Control, click on this mask. And that'll load that mask up as a selection. Now we need to invert that because I want to add a spotlight here. So what we're going to do is click this button right here. I'm using the combo panel, but you'll find it on the CX panel as well. And that will invert the selection. And now if you click on Spotlight Dimmer, this will act as a spotlight in this area right here. Now, it's very important that you have a selection first before you ever click this button here. Now, if you want a dimmer, you would hold your Command or Control key down while clicking Spotlight Dimmer, and then it would act as a dimmer. But let's go ahead and click it, and it will act as a spotlight. And the Gaussian Blur comes up, and I just click OK. Now, this defaults at 30%. And I, that's a little too strong. I'm going to take the opacity down. Now, if you hover to the left of the 30%, you see the little hand come up there. If you hold your Option key down when you drag, it'll drag this one increment at a time. You see that? And I'm going to take it to like 25%. So holding that option gives you a little more fine adjustment when you're doing that. Well, that's 26%. Let me hold that option key down and hover here again and drag it down to 25% right there. So here is the before and here is the after. So let me shut both of these off. And now I'll turn them both on and notice how your eyes will be drawn right into those hummingbirds. You see that? Isn't that cool? The next thing I want to do is work on the color luminosity, and I only want to work on yellows and greens. Now, we have an action for that called color loom, so I'm going to click on that. It's a black and white adjustment layer in the luminosity blend mode, but it's adjusted, so if I shut this layer off, you don't see any change, right? So it's set up that way. So what I'm going to do is, first off, I want to darken the green tones a little bit. So right now, the greens are at 59, and I'm going to take this to the left to like a minus 30. Now check it out. Here is the before and here's the after. See how it darkened the greens? And I like how it darkened all these leaves down here. And now I want to lighten up the yellows just a little bit. So I'm going to drag the yellow slider to the right and just open up the yellows. So I'm going to take it over to like right there, 98. Now here is the before. And here is the after, so the before and the after. Let's take a look at the overall before and after. So on my TK9 combo panel, I'm going to click this button. We started out here, and now we are here. And I really like this. We are almost done. I think we just need a basic vignette on this image because, you know, that freehand vignette was more for a spotlight to darken everything on the outside of the birds, but then I did a spotlight for the inside. But now I just need a basic vignette on this image, so I'm going to click Vignette and then just click OK for the Gaussian Blur because I always like the radius that it gives me. I'm clicking OK. And that's at 30, so what I'm going to do is hold my Option key down again and just drag this down to like 25 right there. So here's before the vignette and here's after the vignette. I don't have any real dark darks or real light lights, so I'm just going to skip the blend if process that I normally use with vignettes. And now the last thing I want to do is slightly lighten up the midtones. And to do that, it's really simple. Come up to the luminosity mask button, give it a click, and go to midtones one right here. I'll put it to a curves adjustment layer. It could be levels, it could be hue saturation, because I'm not going to make an adjustment with any of these. I'm just going to use a curves adjustment, and nothing will change here. See, here's the before and here's the after. All I'm using that curves adjustment for is to put a screen blend mode on it. So I'm going to click this screen button, 
and now that lightens up the midtones. So I'm going to pull this the whole way off and I'll just drag this to the right. I think I'm going to take it to like around 40%. Now I'm going to hold that option key down again so I can drag this to the left and stop right at 40% there. So here's before lightening the midtones and here's after just the gentle little lightening. And now let's see one more before and after. So I'm going to click the before after button. We started here. And now we end up here and I really like this image and I hope that you give this edit a try. Well, there it is everyone. Another TK Friday comes to a close. I hate it when that happens. I enjoy these TK Fridays. Hey, don't forget to download both images. You can have the one image with the distractions removed and then you can practice on the other image, removing those distractions and try out the TK Gen fill panel. And don't forget, you can download it. It's absolutely free. I'll have links in the description below. Hey, I hope you enjoyed today's full edit. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.